This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information, computing, and communication. It is the fourth one in a set of video clips on information storage and management. It provides a very high-level sketch of the operation of hierarchical file systems. Let us consider a concrete use case. Imagine a student called Mark Mueller having to take an online multiple choice question exam. He must first launch the online teaching software, Moodle in this example. He must then open the questionnaire and click through its pages to answer the questions. When he's done, he must save his answers. Now what happens inside the computer? Clicking on the Moodle icon tells the computer to go look for and load that software. Then clicking on the questionnaire, Pages, tells the computer to load those pages in sequence. Finally, clicking on the Save button tells the computer to store away Mark's answers. Now the questions are, first of all, how does the computer know where to find the Moodle software? Secondly, how does it know where to find the questionnaire? And finally, how does it know where to store away Mark's answers? The answer to those questions are as follows. The computer knows that it can find any program such as Moodle in the programs directory. Moodle then knows by convention that it can find the ICC exam questionnaire, for instance, in the ICC course directory under its own Moodle directory in the computer's data directory. And when the time comes to save Mark's answers, Moodle knows to direct the computer to do so in a file bearing Mark's name under the ICC answers directory. All these files can thus be identified in the hierarchical file system by their so-called tree names. The computer file system thus looks for program named programs slash Moodle. Moodle then tells the computer to look for a file named data slash Moodle slash ICC slash exam. And finally, it tells the computer to store Mark's answers in a file called slash data slash Moodle slash ICC slash answers slash mmuller. Using such tree names is always possible, but not always convenient. Such tree names indeed uniquely identify files in the entire file system. However, programs and their programmers often prefer to use shorter local names to refer to files rather than the long tree names. The extension of short local names into long tree names is automated based on the notion of a reference directory. A short local name can be extended into an equivalent and unambiguous tree name by prefixing it with the tree name of the directory of reference with respect to which the local name is meant to be interpreted. Thus, in the context of answers of the ICC exam, in other words, slash data, slash Moodle, slash ICC, slash answers, Mark Mueller's answers could be saved under the tree name slash data slash Moodle slash ICC slash answers slash M Mueller by simply giving the name M Mueller with respect to the reference directory of the ICC answers. Beyond unambiguous universal tree names and possibly ambiguous local names relative to a reference directory, Hierarchical file systems also often accept other forms of relative file names. For instance, Mark could have a personal home reference directory called Mark under the data directory, and then he could refer to his own answers relative to that directory as dot dot slash Moodle slash ICC slash answers slash M Mueller, where the notation dot dot indicates navigation up to the parent directory, the data directory in this case. Alternatively, Mark could also refer to his own answers 
through a local, non-hierarchical, so-called symbolic link. To do so, he could define such a symbolic link under the name My Answers. Note that such a non-hierarchical symbolic link can be dangerous. Indeed, if the ICC teaching staff later erases students' answer sheets, Mark's symbolic link will be left dangling, pointing to nothing real. So far, we explicitly imagined the file system as covering entirely one and only one hard disk. Extending this view, it is possible for a computer to manage multiple independent hierarchical file systems, each located onto its own separate disk, where different disks and their associated file systems can be distinguished by a capital letter such as C or D. There is, however, nothing that says that one file system must, must correspond exactly to one hard disk. In fact, several separate file systems can be defined on a common hard disk. They would again be distinguished by different file system letters such as C or E. Similar hierarchical file systems can be found on devices other than hard disks. CDs, DVDs, USB sticks, flashcards, etc. can all carry their own file systems referred to by their own letters such as F. In fact, just as it is possible to define multiple file systems on the same device, it is possible to define file systems spanning multiple devices, where additional devices are defined as mounted onto higher level devices. This way, for instance, the F device of the previous example can be mounted onto a subdirectory of the D disk so that a name such as slash MNT slash SDA slash data slash Moodle slash ICC slash answers slash M Mueller could very well denote a file on the external SD flashcard. This slide is merely an example of some of the most popular file system management commands on Unix or Linux systems. The first column lists the command names, the second and third columns list the arguments that these commands require, the rightmost column explains what each common command does. Names, hierarchical or relative, enable programmers, programs, and ultimately the computer to identify individual files in a file system. To load files into computer memory or save them to disk, computers do, however, need storage addresses for them on disk. This mapping from names to storage addresses is a second essential function of file systems. Remember that each disk contains a structured metadata area and an unstructured data area. The data are the real file contents. The metadata are the directories themselves. Every directory contains the storage address of all its descendant directories in the metadata area and descendant files in the unstructured data area. The list of the addresses of all the blocks of a file is called the file map. While a file resides in storage, its file map is saved in the directory entry for that file in the storage metadata area. When a program tells the computer that it is time to start working with a file, i.e. to load it in memory, which is called opening the file, the file map is loaded from the metadata area in storage into a corresponding metadata area in memory. Thereafter, every time the computer needs to access a block called a page of the file, it looks up that page's address in the file map. Of course, the first time that it looks it up, the address will indicate that the page is still on disk, and this is called a page default. As a result of the page default, the computer will bring the page into memory, following the same LRU and locality principles seen earlier. Then it will adjust the page's address in the file map in memory so subsequent references to that page will no longer cause page defaults. Before we end this video clip on file systems, 
It is important to point out that storage devices must be so-called formatted before they can be used. Formatting consists of pre-recording a metadata structure on the device to receive future directories and files. There exists a wide variety of storage device formats, which are briefly summarized in Wikipedia, but would be uninteresting to describe here. These different formats are mostly incompatible with one another, so that a device formatted on one computer may not be usable on another computer, unless that other computer also supports the same file format that was used to define the device on the first computer. Quite aside from storage device formats, every file itself is typically internally structured according to the sort of data that it contains. This can be executable code for programs in binary machine language. It can be sequential data such as numbers, character text, audio, graphics, images, video, or whatever else. Or it can be a multimedia type file mixing code and data of many of the above sorts.